Hello guys, today we are going to talk about what happens when burners from Ebospecher heaters fail. We will be focusing on electronic heaters, but I think this could be applied to Chinese clones also. I will be showing you the inside of the burner and we will talk about the main reasons why these end up smoking and filled up with carbon. Here we have the burner in the normal condition and here is the one I cut so you can see the inside of it. As you can see there is a fine mesh inside and also a lot of holes that can be filled up with carbon or other deposits. This metal mesh is made up from two layers, a strainer-like material on the outside and the finer metal wool underneath it. The burner is built that way that getting inside with a tool is almost impossible and even if you manage to break loose the bigger chunks of the breeze and say uh, you get the surface of the mesh clean, I find it impossible to clean the metal wool. Using solvents could help and the success depends on the way the deposits formed in the burner. If it's mostly surface dirt then you have a chance of bringing the burner back to life but if the metal wool is dirty I would say that this is impossible to clean. Even with a burner that I previously cut I could not clean the inside, so for me, when the burner looks like this, it will surely need changing. I've heard a lot of people cleaning them with different methods, even ultrasound, but from my point of view, when this fine mesh fills up, there is just no way it can be cleaned. Another workaround is by cutting the burner, changing the mesh and welding it back. People will try anything, but if you follow these recommendations, your burner will last for years and when it fails, you should change it with a new genuine part. After a few years of dealing with this kind of failures, I managed to put together a list of probable causes. The most common reason that I have found is that the heater is too big for the place that it is installed in. This causes the heater to reach the target temperature very quickly and will regulate to a lower heat output shortly after starting. The way to detect this problem if the heater is sent to you without seeing the installation is with diagnostics. Here you will find the operating hours corresponding to each power level of the heater. You will see that most of the operating hours are on the middle and low power level and barely any on power and high. If you are asking yourself now why is this a problem, the answer is quite simple. The burner never gets to operate at the temperature where all the carbon deposits just burn away. The burner never has the chance to clean itself and after a time these deposits build up and simply plug up the burner. Now, from what I know, nobody makes or plans to make a smaller heater than 2 kW. The simple solution is to leave the doors open and operate the heater at max power for at least an hour every week and you should be fine. This problem was almost exclusive to heaters installed in modified vehicles with a sleeping cabin on the top but it can happen to any heater installed in other applications in the same conditions. Another reason is the altitude that the heater is used on. Due to the rarefied air, the correct mixture of air and fuel is not achieved by the heater and the unburnt fuel will slowly build up in the burner and it will not be able to operate anymore. Altitude kits can be purchased separately or if you are just planning on buying a new heater, get the second generation of Airtronic with automatic altitude settings built inside the ECU. 
fuel quality. We must say that these heaters can work with a maximum 8% of biodiesel. These fuels lose their properties over time and can cause all kind of buildups in the burner. I am exaggerating with this image, but it gives you an idea of what can build up in the tank. Combining this with the small cabin is the sure death of the burner. If you are running your heater off a fuel tank, make sure you empty it after the heating season is over. Another thing to consider is the position of the inlet and the exhaust pipes. This should be at a distance from each other, so exhaust gases cannot be sucked up by the inlet. Be very careful so the endings of these tubes are not facing the driving direction of the car or flame can be blown back towards the fan. Always respect the maximum length stated in the installation manual. The blower can only handle the max length written. If you plan to make bands on the tubes, decrease the length or use a larger diameter exhaust. Another reason, although not very often, is the distance between the blower wheel and the blower casing. This should be around 0.3 mm, the same as a cutter blade. If the gap is too big, there is not enough air getting in the burner and the burning process is not complete. Be sure to check this also when opening a heater. There are plenty of rumors circulating on the internet in which engine starting spray is recommended to start a heater when it can't start by itself. This will for sure melt the impeller blades and in most cases this cannot be seen from the outside. These guys will never tell the workshop what they did and you will be changing the burner, the heater will work fine during the tests if the blades are only half damaged, but it will fail after a time. Of course, the easy way to detect this is with a CO2 meter, but nobody will invest in this because of the high price tag. So keep in mind to check the opposite side of the blower with a small mirror or even a small camera operating the heater in very dusty conditions. This usually causes the atomizer hole to fill up with dirt and the heater will not fire up anymore. The glow plug screen. This should be changed every year before the heating season. The cost is very low for this part and saves you from downtime when you need the heater the most. This little guy has about 5 layers so even if it seems ok from the outside, dirt can be stuck between the fuel pump's mounting position angle. Very few know this, but putting the pump horizontally will increase the fuel quantity by 10 to 15%. The installation should be done at a 15 to 35 degree angle as shown in the manual. Vertical mounting is permitted, but I recommend the angle mounting. If there is space to mount the pump vertically, it should be also enough for mounting it at the recommended angle. The last reason is just the age of the burner. The mesh from inside the burner is gone, or it is so heavily contaminated with debris that the unit will not start anymore. The burner shown is from a hydronic heater, but you get the idea. Of course, this means buying a new burner. The thing that almost never happens are manufacturing faults or defects. I am not saying it is impossible, but in 99% of cases the problems come from outside the heater and not from the production process. I wanted to share my findings because these heaters get a really bad reputation because of these faults, but actually there are no real problems with the units. Mostly it's just because of the incorrect usage and incorrect servicing. Most of these rules apply to any other heater on the market. 
Even if the construction is a little bit different, the working principle is the same for all. Thank you for watching and I hope that these tips will help you in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more heater videos. Take care everybody, bye bye.